Yeah, what's going on, good people? This is MC Till with Everybody's Hip Hop Label, co-author of the Boom Bap Review. You are tuned into the Boom Bap chat number 65. Really excited to welcome back uh, a really, really dope artist uh, guest tonight. We're going to introduce him and set the room in just a moment. Before that, make sure you uh, go on over, check out everybody's records here in Cincinnati, Ohio. They have a great selection of dope boom bap, uh, hip hop, vinyl, tapes, CDs. They have books. If you don't have your copy of the Boom Bap Review yet, you got volume one there, volume two. There we go. Volume three we're working on right now. Make sure you check that out at boombapreview.com. And we have a Boom Bap magazine coming out this Tuesday, our first one, a uh, digital magazine. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Uh, but check out those things, please. We've got a lot going on and uh, really hope that you check it out and uh, tune in and give us your feedback on all this stuff. In the room tonight, as always, with the Wu-Tang background, we have Profound. Profound, how are you this evening, my man? Good, Till. What's happening? What's good, hey. I.O.? What up, though? You know it. And as always, we have Io. Io Mas Morad is here. What's up, Io? What up, brother? Peace, peace. What's the word? What's the word? Oh, man. It's a good word tonight. That's for sure. <laughs> and lurking in the background, as always, we have Neville. Neville, what's up, man? Cool, man. Cool. Just showing. Friday. I'm thinking it's Friday. It's Friday. It's not Friday yet. We got one more day. One more day chilling. Uh, our guest tonight, we've had him. He was on not too long ago, but the night we had him, we had a, a few other things scheduled that night. And so we didn't have much time with the guest. So we, we asked if he'd come back and he was like, yeah, of course. Uh, so we really appreciate that. Our guest tonight, uh, before Wu-Tang was Wu-Tang, he was there uh, starting this movement in Stapleton. We're going to get into that and so much more, but want to welcome back a warm welcome to the one and only Pop the Brown Hornet. Welcome to the show, Pop. Yo, what's going on, hip hop world? Thanks for having me on the cool bat. You already know. Yeah. Well, Stat nailing in the building, Stapleton. Boom, boom, fire. Yeah. Well, that's what <laughs> I, I want to start right there because the last time you were here, you had a great, you know, you, you were dropping all kinds of historical facts. And a lot of people don't know. And right. people that are tuning in tonight still don't know because they didn't tune in the last show or whatever. Uh, but I want to we, we kind of started with your your music involvement in Stapleton. But I wanted to ask, you know, more kind of personal question of like, what was Stapleton like growing up? Like, what was the young Pop the Brown Hornet like before he was Pop the Brown Hornet? Like, what was that like coming up in Stapleton? Yeah, um, growing up in Stapleton was definitely just like a maybe like a karate movie um, mm. where it was just like a whole bunch of a whole bunch of lessons because I grew up in Stapleton since I was four or five years old so I was there before a lot you know and I grew I went to the fours the fives so I'm really embedded in like Stapleton history um I'm the only child from my mother my father has several siblings but from my mother I'm the only child so in Stapleton I grew up as an only child so as I got older and I started embracing the outside world, I, I always, um, and growing up, not for me to fast forward, but growing up, you had, to, you had to get hard, you had to get coverage, you had to get all of those things. And all of those things I gained in Stapleton, whether it was being scared of someone and then having to, you know, turn around and have a, a, a fight for yours, that happened in Stapleton growing up. Um, I also went to karate school. So when I was a youngster, I went to karate school maybe from the age of seven to I was an early teen. Mm. So that helped me out a lot because as I was getting coverage and hard or whatever the case may be, true story, um, I'm going to tell you, um, I used to get chased from the Catholic, or Catholic school bus. I used to go to Assumption and then we used to drive and grab, go get St. Peter's. And at the time, you know, I was frail. I was a skinny kid. Even though I knew the martial arts, you know, that that tell you to defend yourself, don't attack anybody. So um, when we used to go pick up the other school, there was kids called Darren and Derek. They was too fat, too fat little, you know, they looked like twins, but they was cousins. And they would get on the bus and they would fuck with me. You know what I mean? They would mm -hmm. mess with me. Yeah. You know, so I get off the bus, I'm stuck. I'm running home. I'm running from these two fat. I knew they couldn't catch me. So we like, you know. So one day. I'm going to the store with one of the, you know, one of the colorful, that colorful money, food stamp, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So as I'm going to the store, I'm passing by the little center in Stapleton and I'm passing by Darren and Derek. 
and they with their little crew or whatever the case may be. So it's like, oh shit, yo, you know what I mean? Yo, what's up? Yo, here come the soul group, you know what I mean? The soul, the punk, yo, pop. So they get me in the circle to grab me up. They start, you know what I mean? Throw me back and forth, boom, boom, my phone. They dig in my pocket, they grab the $5 food stamp. They're like, yo, get out of here. Like, you know what I mean? So I'm like, damn, I know I can't go home. Oh, that was dinner money right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, now y'all gotta get that back. They're like, we ain't, we ain't, get out of here. So I whipped Darren and Derek's ass that day, right? And that, I, then I like, yo, that was like the, that that was the changing point because after mm. I did that, they went and got their cousin troll me and then one thing led to another, I wound up getting stitches, you know what I mean? Mm. But that broke me into gladiator mode. That was like, you know what yeah. I mean? Because that's when I started using the karate. Like, oh, okay, this shit work. I beat up Darren and Derek at the same time. So, like I said, when you go through the chambers, you know what mm. I mean? It gets you hard. It gives you, a, you understand who's real, who's not, who's just front, who's just mouth. You know what I mean? Stapleton had everything from the athlete, the boxer, the gamer, yeah. the, 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 the manipulator, the, the lover. The, the, everything was inside of Stapleton. You know what I mean? So any drug you want, it was like uptown. You know what I mean? So from the dust to the ground. I mean, you know, not to glorify that, but in the hood that was there. You know what I mean? So the late nights was always a party. It was family orientated. Before the crack and the rap really came out, Stapleton was a, a family oriented project. It wasn't until the drugs really came yeah. in, and, you know, in the mid 80s to whereas everybody became, you know, competition to one another. Mm. And, and, and that's when, you know, when the hip hop and so forth and so on came about. But Stapleton, definitely a family oriented uh, place. That's why you'll see people from Stapleton and from any neighborhood, but very prideful. So you yeah. see your Ghostface Killer will be prideful. Your Mac Wiles is prideful. Mm. Shaheen, the rugged child. We, we moved with a certain kind of pride because we knew, we felt like we was the capital. We always felt like Stapleton was the capital of Staten Island. And not just because of us or the Paris crew, because the history of Stapleton itself, back in the days, in the, in the 50s, um, it used to be a, a, Stapleton had a team in the NFL called the Stapleton Staples. You know what I mean? Which played games against the New York Giants. But it was short season, maybe eight games. But the tradition and history of Stapleton runs that far back. Wow. You know, there used to be an airport and all of that before, you know, they threw up a projects on the land and, and made right. Stapleton projects. You know, yeah. so it has a rich tradition. So and I think when the projects came and anyone and it's called Stapleton because uh, Stapleton is actually uh, he was an architect, an Italian architect that settled on Staten Island and mm. he built colonial houses that's there to this day in Stapleton Heights. So the area mm. was, was called Stapleton. You know what I mean? You know, when when I was reading uh, you God's book, Raw, entering uh, my journey into the Wu-Tang, he, there was a lot of family in that book. There was like strong ties to family that he talked about. And he also talked about, um, you know, you know, the, the, with the drugs coming into the neighborhood, he, he painted a picture that for him, for some of the time when he was out there dealing drugs, it, it seemed like it, it could be very traumatic. Like there was, he was constantly thinking about, you know, if he was going to get shot, get arrested. So there's this, this constant fear of what's, what's going to happen around the corner behind me, you know, I, and I just thought about like living in like that constant state of fear. And I just was wondering, like now, as you look back, like, you know, kind of hindsight's 2020, do you look back and like, you just, you know, shared about the, the experience with those guys you beat up and then they came back. Do you look back now? What's that? I was, little, I was a little kid, but we continue. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 So but, I mean, but do I look back? Do I look back? And yeah. Do you look back and think, man, that, that was, that was really like, that was really messed up to, to experience that as a kid. Um, I got, you know, it's, it's a combination of things. It's unfortunate when you throw up, you know, pro the, 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 the idea of projects, period. I mean, yeah. you know, the, I mean, and that's a European thing. It, it wasn't something like, you know, Black said, let's build projects. The projects right. come from Europe and they brought that mind state to America and, um, you know, shoved us in there. But what I would say is the fact that um, it definitely makes you sh stronger. It's definitely, it's definitely growing up in the projects. I mean, when you're living on top of people and you're dealing with different attitudes and you're dealing with 
whatever it is. I mean, you don't want to say why I have to go through it because I know to this day, um, coming from out of Stapleton, you know, it doesn't prepare you for everything that you're going to mm -hmm. face, but it definitely prepared a lot of individuals for life's challenges, yeah. whether the ups and downs. Sometimes you're rolling with this crew, they might be on top. Sometimes, you know, the, from the followers to this and the third. Um, do I feel blessed to make, have made it out of that era? But of course, yeah. you got to remember, we grew up in New York when New York had the highest crime rate in America. So yeah. when you have New Orleans and Chicago, they like to brag about it. It's like growing up in the, in the, in the 80s to, to, the, to, the, to the 90s. You know, unfortunately, New York, it was it was it was a fire zone. And you, yeah. you and and like you got he's from Paul Kill, aka Killer Hill. You know what I mean? And I I always explain to a, a lot of individuals when you have Staten Island, you have maybe five New York City projects. You have I mean more than five, but the the the, the known ones would be Manasaw, West Brighton, New Brighton, uh Stapleton, and then I would say four, but Paul Kill is one of the fifth known projects in Staten Island, but it's not city-based, it's private. Mm. So, during, so during the crack era, a lot of violence went up there and maybe not got attended to because it was in New York City. Like Stapleton, we had a local cop, like Tenet Petrino. Yeah. Every project would have a cop that would really be based to, to patrol. Not that Paul Kill went unpatrolled, but it it wasn't in, it wasn't New York City, so a lot of extra nonsense probably would go up under undetected. And then Paul kills a build Paul kills a builders when you walk in, you're out of sight. They can't see you once you walk mm. inside. Stapleton is when you walk in, you look up. You could be at balcony, so you might you know back then you couldn't see you in the elevator, but when you walked out on the balcony, you're like, oh hi, yo yeah hi you. Know? Devils on the fourth floor, or whatever the case may be. So we was more exposed, but it was dangerous because I call it BC before cameras. We, you know, everybody right. had a everybody everybody had a had a had a gun on them. I, mm -hmm. I'm from Stapleton. We used to go to Paul Kill. We used to go to the 160. When Mep said the 160, ooh, I mean, oh, now back then 160 had they, the, the dreads was there. They were selling dime bags. You know what I mean? Um, so if you didn't have a car, you wasn't going to the uh, Evergreen and Hancock, or you wasn't going to Palm Meadows, or you wasn't going, you know what I mean, over there the Brooklyn side of thing, getting getting some bud. You went to Paul Kill, up in up in the buildings, and you, it was risky because you you'd get robbed. You know what I mean? Right. People people came from Jersey and all over, and you walk up in there and you would get robbed. You get hit over your head and robbed. So it was it, it was definitely a risk. Um, you know, definitely a uh, uh, a time that I call it the terror era. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And we'll never be, you know, thank you know, thank God we'll never go back to those times. But yeah. they, they definitely, you know, and you and like he said, it was you didn't know if you was losing your life. It was sad. You seen family members on crack. You seen, you know what I mean? So yeah. it was it was a saddening time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned Park Hill and um we have a, a listener watcher, Lex Pierre on Facebook. He was wondering about uh, that that part about Park Hill was that not part of the New York Housing Authority? Was that something it was, different? It, it's not part of New York Housing Authority. It's okay. actually private, private, private right. owned Park right. Hill. So you in our la the last time you were with us, you talked about Park Hill and you mentioned how the gods were in Park Hill and how RZA, when he came out as Prince Rahim, you know he had a, the a, I guess the A side or whatever was more positive or whatever. But then the that didn't really go over. But so then he came back and started and started doing woo. And that was the more darker, you know, grittier side of things. When you talked about Park Hill and the gods, you talking about the 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 5% nation? Yeah, I'm talking about the five percenters. I mean, on Staten Island, the gods were all over Staten Island, um, predominantly New Brighton. And, um, you know, uh, and there was a certain time when you know, the lessons was being passed around and everybody was changing their names. So the guards definitely was up in Paul Kill as well. I mean, I know individuals, government names because I went to school with them. So I ain't going to say it, but from when you got Sha La or Sha Kwan, Nick became Effin Man, Sha La became Ray Kwan, his chef, you know, Ray, uh, Prince Rakeem became Ritz. So they was all, you know what I mean? Sun God became Ghost. So they was all underneath the 5% of kind of study. And that's why the clan moved the way they did because you know as a like b like c like so 
the guards got together, they 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 gave their name visited Abbott, and they followed they followed suit. Um, so in order for me really like you know, get in where you fit in. I mean, yeah. I understand. I mean, I didn't I I studied the lessons, but I wasn't changing my name, becoming a father center. I mean, I had knowledge and self, I knew a lot of things. And, you know, not to say I knew more than them, but I just, right. at that time, me having my publishing and then standing third, I, I just felt like it was best for me to, to stay put. You yeah. know what I mean? So in hindsight, when you have a you guard writing a tell a tell all book, and even when you hear him sometimes speak, you know, Riz's name, it's not really kind the way, you know what I mean? So I kind of feel better just the fact that I sat back and I don't have to be bitter because I kind of seen it coming before it did. Yeah, you yeah. know. So when people sometimes you get blinded by the light, or when you used to be on decal, you know what I mean, or you used to go down to Delancey Street to get a coat. There used to be the pedals on the side, and they open up a piece of tissue and be like, "Yo, this is twenty four karat gold," and when you buy it, it was ten karat. Hmm. But at that time, when it sparkled in your eyes, you know, you 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 know. You thought it was the official 24 karat, but it was just dipped in gold. And right. that's what I think individuals brought into because at the end of the day, when Rizzo walked away with 55% of the pie, and then they only walk away because that's how it's split. I mean, when you split a pie, you split it production, it's 50, and then you split down publishing, and it got split down 10 ways. And he right. got 5% of that too. So he walked away with 55% of the pie. I mean, what am I going to eat? I'd rather, you know. I'd rather eat my own little personal pie. Right, because you last time we spoke, you talked about how you you already had songs. You had oh, a bunch of songs. With, I, had a ton, I had a ton of songs with R and S. R and S. Yeah. When we, when we touch on R and S, R and S, like you know, I always say, like is the godfather of the Staten Island hip hop sound. So you know, to say he lent RZA a hand and to say he lent Phantom of the Beat a hand because you know he was the one that they was going to to get little pointers or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. Um, that was always my go to guy. He. I helped, I mean, he helped me get better. I helped him get better. The Shaheens came along, the downloads, the June Lovers, and the King Just, and so forth and so on. But I was, you know, there in, in the beginning stages when, when people were, you know, getting their craft together. Right. So you had all these songs. So then if you if you signed over to Wu-Tang Management, you, all those right songs on. would go there. Well, have I... You know, once you sign and see Rizzo, I mean, he, you know, they, they know what the brown one it was back then. And right. he knew I was very, you know, very close with RNS. And they, 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 they knew my music was there and I had songs. So, regardless of anything, you know, you have an individual who could write songs. So, right. once I once I signed, you know, we, and once they got into the studio like they did, you know, my pen was going to have to bust regardless. So, you'll give me that song. Oh, that song that, yo, yo, or what goes on must come down. I like that. Let, I let, that's mine because right. you gotta remember when they came with um protect your neck, you know, and if that was you know making someone uh, what did they do? They grabbed Method Man. That's a solo song. So and he had to break that down ten ways. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So hey, um, you get off my class, and that really helped propel the clan at yeah. that particular time get right. to that next level because that song was major. It was big. It was yeah. bigger than protect your neck, but it was an individual song. So in hindsight, it did help. Now you look in 2021, a lot of shit don't move without method. Man. So, right. but yeah. everybody wasn't going to be a method man. You right. understand what I'm saying? You would have yeah. to take that chance because as superb as the lyricist as um, Inspector Deck is, he didn't get that same kind of as method man did. Right. So, you know, Sometimes, you know, some people hit behind the numbers. Some people got lucky with the numbers. Some people excel because Method Man was able to jump right on Def Jam and him and Red Man have mm. a chemistry that that's the chemistry he eats off. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Of course, being down with the Wu is definitely pointers and all of that. But I see Red and they still are flying high. Oh, that's yeah. Good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no so, doubt. So, no doubt. but... You know, he was smart enough to say, you know what, I'm gonna make sure I I I I I get my I get a solid bag in my hand because just like once the clan came out or whatever the case may be, what the visit do, he became a grave digger. He was this, he was that. It wasn't like he was solid with a Wu Tang. Right. He was also playing around with other with other groups as well. You know what I mean? But the clan was what really helped propel him to to the yeah. stardom that he was. Yeah. He was able to to hide behind the numbers. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I want to pause here, see if uh, Iomas, Profound, Neville, any 
Any thoughts, reflections, questions? Yeah, Papa, I got a I got a martial arts question. Like I know, I remember when the clan first came out and you know they was using the whole martial arts thing but it took right. me back because being in chicago like that was our thing too and i just wanted to know like because i'm a 70s baby it, it was that just an extension of the 70s is that is that martial arts movement was that big was that huge in stapleton and in staten island and you know what i'm saying before it was before it became popular with the clan Yes. Martial arts was big. Um, like I said, well, my, my father is a black belt third degree. So he comes before generations before me. And a lot, it was a lot of karate heads coming up in the 70s, you know, on Staten Island. Before guns was big, you know, there, there, there was karate heads. I don't know all of their names, but anybody from Staten Island, if you listen in chime in, it was the Davis to this one or that one. My father just happened to be one of those dudes. Um, so I had his sensei. I actually had my, the same sensei as my father. As they say, he went to the adult class and I went to the kid class. You know what I mean? Mm. So when the karate uh, things did come on, when they when they came on TV, like, you know, 12 o'clock noon on a Saturday or Sunday, that was a big following, yes. We ran to the TV, we sat in front of them, and then we came downstairs like we were going to kick ass. I was able to do so because I knew how to throw a front kick. I knew how to do a side kick, a spinning back kick, <laughs> but because I was going to karate school. But yeah, um, and a lot of people, you know, if you actually Stapleton, if you got kicked nine times out of ten, it was I, I was going to kick your ass. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, and that you know. That was just, and it becomes natural because you're anybody who studied the arts, that's, just, that's like riding a bike, especially when you're like six, seven years old. It's just reflexes. I mean, you know what I mean? I, by accident, um, <laughs> it, it could go down. But um, it did, like, like to, to answer your question, yes, uh, a major part of Staten Island, I'm sure, in all the hoods, was watching karate flicks when it was coming on, into the this and into that and all of that. You know what I mean? Word. Aramas, anything? Be good. Yeah, I, I was just, yeah, I, you could see that what he was saying about Method Man, because Method Man had that charisma, you know what I mean? Like like when he compared Method Man to Inspector Deck, even though Inspector Deck was sharp lyrically, I, he just didn't have the same charisma as a Method Man. Like Method Man and, just had that charisma, you know what I mean? And Method Man, and he had that, he had that before he was Method Man. Like right, he, had that, so, exactly. as, he had that when he was shot corn. Like yeah. true story, when I'm from Stapleton. Like I said, used to go to Paul Kill to get Bud. I used to have him, you know, the shorties underneath me, I pull up or whatever the case may be, going to tell him to stay in the car, someone, you know. But if I pull up Method Man, and this is how you knew they was all in link in, in yeah. sync with each other because the building be laced with all. But I pull up and meth would go to burn. <laughs> oh, <man." laughs> I swear to God, like, oh, and, this is, and I pull at him and expect the deck to bring rounds in front of us. Wow. Like, oh, so, but when I went, I used to say to myself, yeah, he's just flirting more up than I'm in the building, but <laughs> it looked like he's showing me mad love. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> But now the whole building know like yeah, this right. Stapleton's about to come mm. in the building get some right. But wow. he was always theatrical. He always mm. was a lively person. As you know, what I mean, I didn't really hang out with him too tough because like um I, I was from Stapleton, like he was from Park Hill. But we were making music, we heard of each other. He used to have a joint called the Panty Raider and and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I had numerous songs going on. This was, you know, underground joints or whatever right. the case may be. So we would hear of each other. And then when there was a, um, like I said, a battle that was in, in Park Villa, whatever the case may be, I don't remember the faces that was there, but people was like, "Yo, Meth was there, and Ray was, you know, before they was there, Chuck was yeah. there, and Shout Out was there." So, I mean, like brothers always knew of each other, and like I said, yeah. Meth um, was always charismatic. Uh, OG, aka um, Cavadonna, was always charismatic. Um, mm -hmm. um, but you know, Ray Ugard, uh, it was you know standoffish. Inspector Deck was always kind of quiet. Yeah. Um. Th this is just me growing up. On, yeah. on, on. And Rizzo was like I said, he was a little bit older than me. Um. Then I just looked at him as like you know he was like a weird scientist 
to me all, all the time. Before he became, you know, the big RZA, yeah. he was just like, peace hard. And, you know, he was just weird. You know, he was just in his own zone to me. Like, yeah. I think all producers is weird anyway. So oh, yeah, for sure. It was like, yeah, producers yeah, yeah. are just weird. And, and he was like extra weird when I used to see RZA. Yeah. It, in you guys' book, he talks about how he really pushed Method Man and really encouraged him. Uh, I didn't know if you had insight on that or not. I, I thought that was yeah, kind of but but I'm gonna tell you, um, I, not that I have insight on that, but you God is like a brother to them. Like you know, yeah. you God played a more major part as a as a glue than yeah. probably would give him benefit for because he was street glue. But once you get on and people start blowing up, you know what I mean? It's like. And Sir Patton, even if he might have been like, yo, man, I'm telling you, you could be nice. You don't stick that shit out. And you keep to it. And, and, and maybe he and maybe he was, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, because when you have that brotherhood and in the hood and you just rolling blunts and we up in the, in the, in the, in the, in the you know, sometimes you forget conversations you might have had in Crackhead Wilmot House or something like that. You might have been over there drinking a 40. I'm like, yo, I'm like and, you know, thanks for that conversation. So those are real conversations. Do you remember yeah. each one? No. Um, did they happen? More than likely. Right. Because like I said, that they were from that, you know, to a uh, uh, Paul Kill element. And they were down with a crew called DMD. Mm -hmm. before, they were, before they was Wu Tang, they were all DMD. They would dick them down. So mm -hmm. it was a large group of um Paul Kill that they was down with that. It was deep. Yeah, so DMD was was more Park Hill. And DMD then, was who, DMD was DMD was all day Paul Kill. We was in DMD down in Stapleton. That was DMD was up in Paul Kill. And Stapleton was more woo. The Stapleton was right. gladiators. Oh yeah, GP. We, we, gladiators. We, was, we was we was gladiators. We was Wu Tang. We was Paris crew. And then there was a lot of crews that came underneath Foy Lob, TMF, uh, 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 Deuce Mob. And, yeah, you know, but those were those those were the, the the main groups at the time when when we were young at the same time the same graduating class. It was BCC, DMD Avenue crew up in Paul Kill, and it was the Paris crew, Gladiators, and Wu Tang forms. Wu Tang had its start it in Stapleton PJ. Yes, it was not saying it wasn't saying Wu Tang up up in Paul Kill, and, and a, a couple of months ago. Like, you know, I may have said it on the last show, but yeah, yep. Method Man did, you know, he said it on, on the Scoop, Scoop interview that, um, you know, Wu-Tang had it start out in Stapleton. Right. And so the so the Wu-Tang, you know, lingo, the, the just the whole thing of it was, well, you was think, because, yeah, go ahead. No, finish this thing. I was going to say the whole thing of it, like with the karate, the movies, like it was just kind of, you know, it, it was prevalent. In well, you feel like this. Well, you feel like this, right? You figure like this, you see a movement. And like I said, Riz is older than us. So he like, and he's already in the industry. So he like, damn, if I could grab a couple of these motherfuckers and make a Wu Tang clan. But, but, you, but in order for that bomb to explode, you gotta light the wick. So the wick is really instinctive. The wick, that bomb is nothing without that wick. It's even though, you know, the Riz might have been the spark to it, the wick is there. The, the, the bomb is already there. Now, now you light it. Now he made a man-made alliance. He made a man-made alliance because the mo the movement was already in in in, 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 in existence in Stapleton. So what do you do? You grab Ghost. Go, you know, Ghost is part of the, the original movement of the Wu Tang. You know what I mean? Saying it in our rhymes and our body movements and this, that, and the third. So him RZA coming and moving in Stapleton project. I mean, he was always in the Stapleton area, but he came to the hood at a certain after he made the, you know, during the time he was making the Prince Rock came and all of that. And he got to see the lobbies of the Stapleton because before Stapleton wasn't a place that you could come into. We really blocked all outsiders out. You had to get a pass to come through Stapleton. Mm -hmm. So if he was from here and there anywhere, it was like, nah, we was like, nah, you, you know what I mean? So RZA coming through was more on the music tip and he wanted to bring the unity of Park Hill and Stapleton together. Like, yo, let me bring the MCs together. And because the guards are there, but Stapleton, we knuckleheads. Like we, you know, we use fighters, dusthead, you know what I mean? He was like, fuck that, we rowdy. Stapleton was just rowdy. And we, we had energy, but we was creative enough. We was also creative. We we, we um innovators, you know what I mean? Send yeah. we, we we set the set the, the movement and everything. 
and like I said, it, it lies before us, the parish school and so forth and so on. It just have, so happened to trickle down. So once you have risen, come and study our style, study who, when, when Paris crew or state or gladiators, we went to other neighborhoods, we were swarming. We went deep, mm. 15, 20 deep to other neighborhoods. So that's where he's seen the swarm from for the mm. killing bees. He's seen us swarming. So it was like, you know what I mean? When he says the slums of the Shanlin, that's Paul Kill State, that's the slums, mm. that's the 10304. You know what I mean? So what he had to do, he had to get people that was from the slums. All right, Method right. Man, you get, uh, you got, they, you know what I mean? Ghost thing, you know what I mean? We from the slums, you know what I mean? And right. put them into a group. So it was the Wu-Tang Clan, not just Wu, it was just the clan from out of the Wu-Tang movement. Those right. ones are supposed to be the first eight members you were supposed to see. That's why he said, yeah, boom, boom, Shaheen, pop the brown horn. The 60 second, I mean, because that's how big you know, it, 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 it was an onslaught in the movement. And Rizza, though he made one of the, just, you know, he wanted to play the, 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 the ruler and, and the ambassador of the whole shit. It was already a movement that was in motion. You just jumped on a moving train. And right. due to the fact that you had a little bit more guidance and you was older, yeah, you heard, so you, you get all kudos for that. But at the same time, you also got to pay back and you also got to water the tree to, from where, which you got your idea from. Mm. You know what I mean? You just don't eat from off the tree and you don't come back and you don't feed the tree that helped nourish you and your whole family and your whole movement. You don't yeah. Do, hey, do you know if he's ever spoken on that? Like, is there anyone ever addressed him on that publicly? I, I, well, I, I mean, heard it. well, listen. When you figure we 27 years later, sometimes, I mean, you, you yeah, know what I mean? Right. I'm all going to say like, ah, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yo, tell Brown who ain't about. Like, I'm just giving you history. So I'm telling sure. you, like, and you could get Rizzo on the other side and, you know what I mean, panel up and we can answer questions back and forth or go back and forth and have debates because this is real shit. I'm going to yeah. tell you a truth. And this is another truth. This is a true story. I'm going to tell you a good, I'm going to tell you a good story. Um, one time, I was in front, we was in Stapleton, I was in front of 218 Broad Street. And um, you know, he's out there in the hood, you know, hustling. And um, I see a we see a crowd coming, you know, from behind Warren Street, you know, coming from like the Paul Kill area. So we squint and everybody grabbed it, yo, who that? What the fuck? And then when you get closer, you see the Rizza in like, you know, a little crowd and shit. So Rizza get comes right in front of 218 Broad and he's with A Summer. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? He's with his cousin. So he's like, little dirty, right? Little dirty, right? Yeah. So he, he, he comes right there and he's like, let's rhyme. So little dirty, he's in his, you know, his natural form going in and I'm coming back at him with my shit. You know what I mean? He's going back and forth. And then, you know, old dirty was like, yo, I don't rhyme like that. And I was like, yeah, I don't rhyme like you either. But I was coming <laughs> like, you know, at the time it was like, who knows what I was saying, but I can see some rhymes from that era. Even when I yeah. was saying No More Mr. Nice Guy, it was just like, you know, so many different rhymes. Here I come like Al Pacino, more vexed than Tony Montana sniffing up a kilo. So if you don't want to feel the drama, your best bet is to go upstairs and sleep with your mama. Because <laughs> I'm out here breaking dawn, slapping up them pussies with that real bullshit I'm on. You don't really want it. You ain't got the knuckle check to handle the brown hornet. So you better go run and hide because your fans, your friends, and your freaks stay on my side. When I catch them by myself, I make them blush like Barbie. Have them screaming like a bitch, saying, please don't rob me. Save your voice, kid. I can't hear a thing. I'll let you sing as I bring my GP Wu-Tang. I'm a skin sweller. With these hands, I'm a nice fella. When I'm done, I make you feel like Helen Keller. I'm not the one you bring your bullshit to. Try to play me and they're all going to laugh at you. Because uh, I sport a style that's pretty like a bitch. You try to tiptoe towards my flow. That ass is his. I knock them down like HIV. And then I kiss their ass goodbye like the A to I to B. The S, oh yes, I put it on my chest. And let the lady know that I practice safe sex. Ha, you can try, you might die because I'm on some shit. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Oh, wow. Oh, Mr. Nice Guy. That's the original No More Mr. Nice Guy. Not that bullshit that they tried to promote on that Hulu series. You know what I mean? Mm. Mm. Wow. I Omas, what's up, man? Yeah, he dropping gems, man. <laughs> but it's like, based on what he's saying, too, like you can hit you read the I mean see the individual interviews of certain 
members that was in Wu-Tang that was disgruntled with the contract that they signed from Ray Kwan. I know he got out of his contract. Ghost got out of his. Um, uh, I think you got had an issue with that contract. So all of them, a lot of them was was to like to 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 um pop's point. That's what it was. And him having a hindsight not to sign. Like I like to go, I know we go get into his uh so they, so, so, so so that's why so that, so that's why I was blackballed in the in the sense because you gotta you gotta remember if all those members signed, and even though I was there. They never wanted to feature me because they was like, well, listen, I signed, you got to sign too. We ain't featuring you, motherfucker. If I had to right. bend over, motherfucker, you got to bend over too. Yeah. Right. That's the right. mind state. You know what I mean? Right. Seemed like you had that Ice Cube foresight, though. You know, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's there exactly you go. what it was. There like, you I go. Yo, when I, when I, I, when I, I watched, when that. I watched, when I watched that NWA shit, I was like, yo, I'm ice. I just didn't even yeah. jump in because exactly. I knew I would have jumped the fuck out and I didn't uh, want to have to either fight. Like, back yeah. then, you, you don't know, you might have got left on the side of the road. So yeah. I just like, nah, I'm good. I, 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 I'll fuck with myself. Yeah, I'm good. Right. I like what you said. So this goes like right in hand. I know we're going to talk about the album more, but I love what you said in Foreman Mandela. Mm. I'm a champ, a leader. Uh, uh, what is it? A t- what is it? A take? I wrote it down, so I was just trying to say, like, uh, 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 man, make them. Uh, 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 I take a I take a doubter and make them a believer. The longer the journey, the bigger the reward. Yeah. That's why I move on my own accord. Can't rush perfection. Greatness, Greatness takes, takes time. time. I was like, come yeah. on, bro. <laughs> like, you making that boy down, dog. I want all my blessings. No skipping, skipping the line. The line. Yeah. That's like my friend. No, no. Like, I love that. The fact that you had that. That's just what it was. You had the ice cube. Like, I ain't signing that. I'm not rotating with that. And I think, well, like, in the end, it may not look like the glamour and the glitz, like, mm-hmm. like you didn't win, but you right. kept your integrity. And now you winning. You know what I'm saying? That's just my, my opinion. Yo, my brother, listen, I couldn't listen. I, I don't know you from a hole in the wall, but you, you, you paid attention and you, you said it, you know, you said it perfectly because at the end of the day, not everybody's gonna acknowledge that. Not everybody's yeah. gonna acknowledge the fact that and sometimes your parent might say, you know what, be a leader, don't be a follower. But mm-hmm. when the when the when the followers is winning, you like you start questioning yourself. Exactly. Like, Exactly. Yo, yeah. what the fuck, yo? Right. And, and then you be like, yo, you gonna throw the like, yo, my dude, like, yo, it's shop, and they just look down at you like, like, don't even, you know what I mean? Mm. It, 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 it's 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 a lot to muster. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like I said, I'm I'm past the bitter stage because yo, I'm alive. I'm here. I'm yeah. and. I look better than the half of them motherfuckers. I'm not stressed out. I don't, I don't have to. I don't have to be around motherfuckers I don't like. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have, when, once you get right, like once you know he, like once you know, like 27 years later, like nah, look, I, I, I've been getting robbed. Like, or damn, my dude, your bank account like that. If it's not like the three musketeers, if it ain't one for all, all for one. No. I mean, where's the equality? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I'm looking at it. Like once we break up from my show, do the show, you go into the mansion, and I might really be going back to a fucking apartment in Paul Kill. Yeah. See, that was always and we sold meant- and we sold millions of records. And not to say somebody's going to an apartment in Paul Kill. I mean, you know, they might, yeah, but not everybody's on that same level. You know what I mean? And not to say everybody, I mean, like I said, when you hit that world stardom, like the woo was today the iconic fucking. Yeah. Biggest, I mean, that logo is right next to Cadillac type shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's a fucking logo that's like, ah, yeah. They should all be living comfortably. When you, th- when I think, th- when I think about Kiss, the rock group Kiss, you know what I mean? No motherfuckers. I don't know if they still perform in seventy years old. No motherfuckers sell out. Yeah. You know, it ain't like one motherfucker going home to a mansion, the other one going home to a trailer, unless he chose to. But yeah. they, they, they all eating. Like, right. you know what I mean? Like, we're going to eat together as a team. Red Hot Chili Peppers, as a team. Like, yeah. let's eat as a team. I don't want to say we eating as a team and then I'm getting the fuck, you know what I mean? My pizza's on a English muffin with, 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 <laughs> with, 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 you know what I mean? Some sauce and some welfare cheese while you, come on, man. <laughs> you're right, you're right, Pop the Brown Hornet with that because groups like Red Hot Chili Peppers, 
they decided to start to split the publishing whenever they wrote a song mm. all four ways so that no matter what because flea saying hey my bass line did it too the drummer's like my drums did it too you right. know and very few people are really going to be willing to give up that when they feel like they're the quote-unquote star or the lead yeah. person but i think that it helps long term with that theory that you say all for one one for all because then the nobody ego. feels nobody feels slighted right well you, you know? figure like this you figure you figure like this 27 years deep into the game i mean really you're rich you, done, you know what i mean you done sold catalogs you just sold you know what i mean mean millions of dollars like you know what i mean you sold 50 percent. they probably didn't even have a say so in what you sold you just sold you know what i mean you sold it so to keep this shit going on, you can easily come back to the table and say, you know what, brothers, to the re- to the remaining ones alive, let's sh- let's split this shit. Let's do another album 50-50. And, and yo, so our kids can because Go said that's how you keep Wu Tang money all in the family. Yeah. Like the lyrics sound so tough and real and hard. Live up to the lyrics then. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like you get back, like you said, that's why Brown Hornet fell back because at the end of the day, I know I would have um my skills and all of that, I, I'm not even questioning that during the clan era. My shit was up to par. I'm not even questioning that. Um, it's just the fact that I didn't have to want to put my knee on, on, on next. You know what I mean? Like I said. And then at the same time when Shaheen was, because Shaheen was out before the clan really blew. And um, being part of Shaheen and we was on Pass It Off and this, that, and the third, a lot of, the, a lot of that movement could have and should have went better to help expose the talent that was coming from out of Stapleton. But, you know, people started throwing roadblocks in the, in, mm. in, in, in the situation. You know what I mean? So that's not just, so, that's mm. just, oh, go ahead, Neville. I'm sorry, my brother. No, this, is one, this is one more thing that I want to want to say with that, you know, um, from the, I was talking about this with Till, like I want to be on the boat one day, just sailing off. It's interesting when everybody has their take on it. As far as, what's his name? Divine? Is that the? The one that's the one the that's man. in the yeah, he's the one who kind of is on the boat. He has his take, like, I did everything right. I gave everybody their publishing. I did blah 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 blah. Resident says, Man, what about those four or five summers that I didn't shower and I'm just making beats? He feels that he's right. You know what I mean? Raekwon feels that he's right with his take. Like, I did the biggest two singles on the first. It's interesting, right? Like, there's only one truth, supposedly. But everybody has their take and their reality on what they felt they deserve and what part they played. Same with Inspector. Yo, Inspector Deck. I always set off their singles. I set off the joints. How come how come my album? What happened to my album? But his album, I think something happened, like the flood or whatever made him lose. So that was a part of his luck too, that messed up his 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 debut washed right. away so to speak so that kind of yeah. messed him up as well from right. on top of the other thing that he spoke about what do you say to that now like when it's like universal law right and everybody everybody feels they did their amount of work everybody feels they did their part and they justify but then everybody's disgruntled at the time you're not thankful for what i did you didn't pay me my due and that's why, and, 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 and once again in hindsight i've seen that coming i see because what happens when you throw when you mesh I mean, it's something that's not really done, but when you mesh all of those personalities um, on the way up, everybody's humble. And that's mm. how it, that's how the clan was within itself. I mean, when they were first making demo songs, they you would hear certain songs that they would give out to certain individuals, like, yo, how how that sound, God? You know what I mean? And then when they would come to the first show, yo, we we're gonna do the shows over here, yo, show up, God. So when you have the whole stand now and was Brighton, New Brighton, Manasaw, but you know, joining together, Stapleton, Paul Kill, and you hear so going through the party. And we moved it. That wasn't just we the clan, that was the Staten Island movement as one because at that time they were our voice and we backed it because we felt like it would, you know, it would come back. Like, you know what I mean? So there was a lot of rhymes and rappers that was involved at the time that was saying, you know, let's help propel them out because. Nobody was looking at Staten Island. I mean, Staten Island was good and looked at. You know what I mean? With the force and bees and, and, and the UMCs. The UMCs was more back, back, backpack. They kept it down in the club and the village and stuff like that. They had their own little movement. Yes, Noah. I love it. 
I love when kids chime into the boom bap chat. Me too. Man. Uh, cool. the, the yeah. remote's right there. It's the remote great. right there. You grab the remote. I always love that. You know, so when when the clan came, West Brighton Street, Street Thugs, the Manus Harbor Street Thugs, you know, New Brighton Street, State mm-hmm. Two Thugs. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, so we, we pushing our thugs through. You know what I mean? Right. Like that's how it was because a lot of people got smacked up from they didn't even know Staten Island could do some shit like that. Right. Like, you know what I mean? But in in hindsight, you know, because like I said, once again, you know, a lot of the clan wasn't really old for the Staten Island. So when you have old dirty bass and Buddha Monk, they started adding on and then you got, you know, they had yeah. their Brooklyn connect and so forth and so on. It, it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah. So if there was a crew coming up today, um, trying to figure things yeah, out, way, bu- a crew bubbling, you know, trying to trying to get on, what advice would you give them? Like, what kind of safeguards can they put in place so they don't get to a place where they're disgruntled, so they can, you know, build community one for all, all for one type of thing? What 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 kind of safeguards might you you know be able to to impart to them to help them out? Yeah, I would, I would, I would stress the equality part from the, mm. from the producer, and I'm not saying it has to be broken down 50-50, But if I'm the producer, if like if Brown Hornet was the main producer, and I'm dealing with, you know, an artist, and I also rhyme, I'm a quite, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a somehow gauge it because I know I'm double dipping my hand in the cookie jar. So right. if I'm a couple, if I'm gonna give up a couple of extra points on my production, like, you know what, I'm gonna throw 10 points to, like, it might be just two MCs and I'm producing it. So I'm gonna throw 10 points of publishing to use, I mean, to production to use, dude, so y'all can eat a little something extra because I'm, right. I'm, 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 I'm eating. But this is how you gotta think when you in group wise. It yeah. has to, because if we looking at a situation like, if we gotta look at each other like we all important. Regardless if I'm the better MC, I mean, mm-hmm. Jada might be the better MC out of the locks, but they have a brotherhood to whereas yeah. even they give him the space to rock, he's still gonna be like, yo, Styles, or yo, you know what I mean? They gonna make sure, you gonna make sure them brothers eat. So right. you at least want a good leader to whereas, it's not just I'm sticking my fangs in your neck and blood sucking you for everything yeah. you got. And, and then send you up on your way and say, you whole, you know, survive the best way you can. They have, I would say to an up and coming group, make sure y'all have that, that business because that's what's really going to help divide y'all. So if y'all can iron it out, it's the, it's the, it's the business, it's the business of music. It's not the music business. Yeah. So the business has to be rectified before you, and that's what the clan didn't do. I don't even think they probably even read it. I think they just took the word from the, the great RZA that he was gonna be um, dealing with equality because they were five percenters and they were God. So they probably put right. their trust in the God and they signed it. And by the time this shit started blowing, it was like, yo, that's what I signed. And then your trust is blown. But by that time, it's too late. You can't even strangle this motherfucker because now it's, it's business, you know what I mean? But he knew in hindsight what he was going to do before he even did it. And I knew what he was going to do. Visit, that's why I said no. <laughs> but it's crazy, too, because he did his cousin. Like, how do you do your like family like that? I saw a documentary where ODB had came out of uh, he came out of prison and he was on a phone call with, with with I think it was power. And he was like, man, we first of all, we family and then we the gods. Like, how can y'all? I was just like, man, it made me almost cry, man. I was just that's, like, man, that was sad, bro. And that's it when was you so know, sad. And that's when you know that, you know what I mean? Once he said, yo, we the gods, how you could do me like that? We yeah. Feel, we felt them. That's when you know cash rules everything around Around me, man. Joe, that's so true, bro. Like, that, 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 it, that, 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 that dollar. Money changes yeah. everything. You know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and, I, and who didn't love a song? Who ain't love O.D., yeah. man? Right. Yo, I had genuine love for O.D. because I tell you, we, we had a, a little altercation and this, that, a third, but after we rectified it, and I'm not talking about the rhyming, because even the, back then when I told you about the situation when he came to Stapleton and we was rhyming, like, that was a sweet night. I mean, probably got 40s and all of that. He came back with ghosts, you know what I mean? So we definitely had a relationship. I definitely had a good relationship with a song before he even blew up and became old dirty. And even when he became old dirty, like I said, I bumped into him a few times with Buddha Monk and Brooklyn. It was always love, you know what I mean? 
Um, he got me into the Source Awards. I remember me and my, and, and my fan Bebo, we was waiting outside. We was looking at street. Street hangs out with Method Man. Yo, we out, yo. Y'all be right back. He stood there for about a half an hour. Nobody came back. Old Dirty came up with his. He was like, yo, what's up? Yo, boom, boom. Yo, who you with? Boom, boom. All right, come on, boom. He got a scent. As soon as he got in, he said, yo, yo. I was like, I'm in already. But he, you know. He still had to, you know, he still gave that loan. You know what I mean? So, so I'm, cur- I'm curious to know, and this is a question for every, everyone in the room tonight. W- at what point, at, like, I'm, I love hip hop music. I'm a huge hip hop fan. At what point do you learn something about an artist that you like or you look up to or whatever, or you like their music? At what point do you learn something about them that makes you not able to enjoy their music anymore? Like, with, you know, I hear stuff about Wu Tang and I'm like, Oh man, that's shady. That's terrible. I'm still bumping Wu Tang though tonight because I love the music, you know. But there are some lines. There are some times when I hear something about an artist that's just so, you know, I just I can't I just can't even enjoy the music anymore. What's that line for you guys? I don't, yeah. I mean, I'll go first. You know what? I, I don't I don't even have one. I, and I'm gonna tell you why because you know what? Who are we to really? Who are we to judge? There are stories. You know what I mean? From the Michael Jackson to the R. Kelly's to the, yeah. the you know what I mean? Elvis Presley's. I mean, there, there's so many of them. But you know right. what it's telling us? That we are human. We are regular individuals. And even though people may put these people on such a high pedestal that it's so unbelievable when you hear a story like, I can't believe he did that. No, this is regular individuals, B. You know what I mean? So when you yeah. bring it back down to earth and you say, you know what? That's just a regular individual. Let me look at him like that. Because the music that comes out of even me, I know it's I know it's heaven sent. That's a higher power that gives me the ability to transcend any form of you know music from out of me. Um, so whether whatever artist it is, I always look at them like they was just blessed at that particular time because yeah. I can't judge them because we all we all born, you know what I mean? We all born to make mistakes. And once you start judging. And, you know, like you say, oh, I don't even want to listen to it. So, I mean, but when Bill Cosby got arrested, it, it, it made me want to watch more Bill Cosby shows. You know what I mean? It wasn't like I, I judged him and said, yo, you did. He was wrong for having them pills because I knew they probably brought the pills to the, you know what I mean? They probably brought the bills to, to Bill. So everybody has a right. Everybody has a come up. Everybody's not going to be perfect in this. You know what I mean? And that's how I look at the clan. As much as I don't really rock with them and I don't pump their music and, and whoever does and you appreciate it, I respect that and I give you your space. But yeah. due to the fact I do know what it is, like, yeah, I do look at them like how you may feel. But like I said, you're from the outside. I'm in the middle of the storm. Right. So I have a reason to, you know, to, to, to be the way I am. You know, I love that idea of like looking at, you know, art, not just coming from a human being, but like more of a divine thing. And like, how can you hate on that? Even if the person has done something you don't agree with, if that, if that music is, divi- you know, divine, it's like, well, what can you do? You got to, because, because the higher power works through us. The yeah, higher power yeah. kicked the junkie, the prostitute. Yeah, right. He, that's who the higher power works through. So even though you might be a thief in the crime, you know what I mean? A higher power works through you. I have yeah. to be wise enough to know and see who you are I'll give you a space and let you work, whatever, whatever. But I know that knowing that you're not a just person, as long as I stay just to myself, mm. I'm going to win. Because, yeah. you know what I mean? I seen somebody who wasn't win. You know what I mean? But he stayed right. true to himself. Whether it was righteous or not, he still won. So that, even if my blessings come late, well, what's a late blessing? You know what I mean? I'm here right. to appreciate it. The, 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 the journey is a blessing within itself. Yeah, man, I want yeah. all my Stop. blessings. No skipping the line. Your blessings is coming, bro. <laughs> I because <laughs> that's what I think. So like well. that's what that's yes. what that's what. So to answer your question, Till, to go back yeah. to your question, all right, I, I'll help you later. And I may probably I probably get crucified for this, but I I know a lot of people rock with Jay Z, but when the situation happened between him and 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 my man Dame Dash, I I looked at Jay Z differently. Because I'm like, man, this is the brother that helped you. It was, it was two, it was three, Kareem, and Jay Z put his own money up, and then it was Dane. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be where you are. So how you cut your man's out? Like, 
I just, I can't rock with that because like I came up with the mentality if I'm eating steak, you gonna be eating steak. Like what it look like I'm eating steak and you having a smoothie or- well, I'm gonna say, say, I'm, like, I'm a, I'm a say I don't like, get that. I'm gonna say it like that. this, I'm gonna say it like this, my brother, because you really, I, I wasn't there, you wasn't there. So you don't know how business might have went top and I mean, indeed. when they was working together, and I remember when Dame Dash was running the, the label and he put camera on as an A and all and all yeah, of that. True, that kind of rubbed yeah, Jay true, the true. wrong way, like, oh, so when I'm out of way, you just feel like, you know what I mean? So right, 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 right. you know, we don't know what happened before true, that, and we don't know true, how indeed. people was feeling cocky. So he might have said, All right, well, since you busting moves without me. Wow. I'm a bust of too. True true you know indeed. what I mean? So yeah. we can't be, even though, like, you know, I, I understand what you're saying. You'll true ride indeed. or die from the beginning. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. in this in this business, you know what I mean? Um, so you might have a chance to, uh, it, it, it's like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, Method yeah. Man wouldn't be where he was if he didn't step out the box. If he just was like, whoa, is this going to be routine clean? And that's that. Wow. He had to step out the box. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And he got mm -hmm. acting and this, that, and the third and all of that. So mm -hmm. everybody's blessings is not going to be the same. True. You know what true, I mean? True. So yeah, yeah, yeah. his blessings might have stopped there with Jay-Z's and, you know, yeah. and, and what and him being with Beyonce. I yeah, mean, he yeah, made yeah. a couple of boom, boom, boom moves. And, right. you know, in hindsight, it looked like he did him, he did Dame dirty. Yeah. But um, I'm sure Dame, I'm sure Dame is all right. Yeah, but I appreciate what you said, like the business, like, like, cause that's what I love. That's what I love about Dela, how they've been together. And I know it hasn't been smooth with them. Like they, they even said, like we get into arguments, blah, 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 blah. But they've been able to maintain. But I think yeah. it's because of that brotherhood, like you mm -hmm. spoke of earlier, Pop. Like when I and see, I think, when I go I to a Dela show, you can tell that them brothers genuinely love each other when they mm -hmm. on stage. Because like love, you know what I mean. I, I think I think De La Soul and Trial Pole Quest and in that yeah. era, the, yeah. the, the record, the contracts they were signing at the time, they were all kind of like getting beat. Wow. So them sticking together to make sure that they eat mm. for the rest of their lives. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You gotta sit in the room and say, "Yo, the, the label fucker." So even Trial Pole Quest, you know, rest in peace to to, to fight. To fight yeah, but yeah. even those brothers, I mean, you know what he said: the record music business is shady. Like right. these mm -hmm. brothers, these brothers was getting raw. These yeah, brothers was getting yeah. so. If we don't sit in the room together and say, "Yo, listen, we all we got." Yeah. If the fans love us, we put on a good show. Yeah. I mean, we can ride this shit out. I mean, right. raw bass. I don't think he ever had a job. It takes two to make a thing go right. He, he's still performing that at wedding. Yeah, like, you yeah, know what I mean? Wow. Like, so. <laughs> what? What, <laughs> what you, <laughs> <laughs> once you Once you have your niche sound and your following and your coat, whatever yeah. the case may be, I mean, I think, you know, it's not going to be at the highest peak when he was, when he was rocking. Right. But like I said, the day laws and all of that, I mean, yeah. they have a cold following that they can bring around the world. And, and I think that's yeah. a blessing. And so for them to say, you know what, let's appreciate what we have. Yeah. That's that's a that's like you said, that's that's brotherly love. Yeah. I appreciate you giving me another lens on the on the yeah. Jay-Z and Dame Dad. Thank you for that. That's yeah, that's yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. That's real. Yeah. I appreciate be that. Yeah, because you know what, like I said, we we very judgmental sitting in our seat. We don't know. We're not the fly on the wall. We right. don't know who did what did boom, boom, boom. Sometimes when like 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 when your girls say it's over, or even when you say it's over, and when you finally that wasn't because you know you let you know the spaghetti burn, like you let the spaghetti burn ten times, bitch. Like like, <laughs> <laughs> like it'd be a it'd be a mountain of stuff that just makes you right. like I got I gotta be out of here, you know what I mean? So right. Sometimes we might just think it was that one thing, like yo, he was wrong, and boom, but it was might have been a oh, right, hold on right. one second, gentlemen. Yeah, you're good. Uh, Neville yeah. or Profound, the either yeah, you want to answer man, that question? Uh, yeah, I actually do. I had a, a little take on it, man. I I think it's difficult, man, because I you know I I go back and forth with it. You know, it depends mm -hmm. on who I've met and who I've seen. You know, and if I was rocking with their music before or kind of iffy before I might see something about them that, you know, I may not particularly care about and they, I may just take them out of my radar. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think right. 
the other thing is where it gets where it gets tricky not tricky but i think what the issue has been is that when we talk about these groups one thing that we even though a lot of them have been played a lot of these groups and everybody is forgetting that it is business yeah and we tend to lower our inhibitions when we dealing with our brother you know and you expecting that your brother you your i am my brother's keeper That's and vice versa profile. you know and but- i think at the end of the day like we still got to remember you know what i mean like it's there's a contract involved you know what i'm saying at some mm-hmm. point and you gotta you gotta you can't it's, it's sad to say, but you really can't lower your inhibitions when you, even though you dealing, you know, you thinking that this is your man, like it's gotta be right. You know what I mean? Otherwise you, and we, we end up with the situations that we've seen. Yeah. Well, you figure like this, man, in the, in the, in the music business, I mean, anybody that has their lawyer writing up the contract, that contract is always going to be in that person's favor. That's first and foremost. Right. So with that being said, it's like, you have to be able to write up a contract and be able to give it. And then if they go revive, you know, have it get, get looked over or whatever the case may be. Or you just got to do straight business from the jump. And, and that's very, that's very rare um, mm-hmm. that individuals are going to come and just be straightforward because this is a business of getting over on someone. That's why you have a heavy saturated uh, hip hop industry with a lot of these younger artists, because those are the minds that can be manipulated. Those mm-hmm. are the ones that are looking for stardom. They'll sign into anything. I mean, you mm-hmm. do have a couple of smart ones, like this, you know, your soldier boys or whatever that may be doing their own thing independently. But a lot of, I don't know, a lot of, a lot of them, they don't care what they're saying to get heard, and they're not caring what they're doing. And the people that sign in them, they want them to have a short life because who's going to eat off that publishing? Who's going to eat off? Who's going to eat off them after they're gone? These yeah. labels is eating off their, they, they're long gone. These dudes are still pushing that music out. It's like the Suge Knight concept, you know, reigns so relevant now because these, these people that are snatching these kids publishing, they know they're going to eat off them and they, they might, they're definitely, their publishing is definitely outliving them early. Mm-hmm. That's wild. Uh, just, bef- oh, go ahead. Not just, yeah, no, I, I definitely want to get into uh, this album. Um, but before we do, I do want to ask a few questions that uh, fans, followers had from last show before I forget. Um, my man on Instagram, Heartland Homie. I love that name, Heartland Homie. Uh, he a- asked this. He said, "Against GP Wu, Against the Grain was one of the most slept on 90s albums. Me and my crew bumped it constantly, but it didn't get the flowers it deserved. Curious to know what you think about that. Do you think it did get the respect it, re- it deserved, or do you believe Heartland Homie that it, it didn't get the shine that it properly deserved? And if oh, not, why? Nah, I didn't get the, uh, the, the shine that it deserved because I believe that, you know, being that effect, the Wu part, the GP Wu, the Wu part, a lot of Wu fanatics and fans wanted us to be, uh, wanted, um, you know, Grizzle to, to stamp it. Mm-hmm. Without that stamp coming from him, it kind of like shot us in the foot. So I was slept on because it wasn't really underneath the rizzes. It wasn't anointed through him to be like, yeah, the Wu GP Wu, those are our brothers. Boom, boom. And they didn't have us open it up for them and boom, boom. They, they didn't do any of that brotherly love that you would expect it being a quote unquote Wu Tang affiliate. So I never look at myself as being an affiliate, but I think it definitely was underrated because the potential that it had, yeah, but but it didn't, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't accepted. Like I said, through the 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 Wu movement, um, that's why I was slept on it and get the 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 you know the, the good exposure that it had. Uh, it was signed to a good label. It was signed on MCA, but at the time MCA was R and B. It was label mates mm. with Casey and JoJo, Mary J. I right. mean, so it had a couple of big hitters. And I think if they would have focused in on us, it could have, you know, it, it could have, should have been. But I do believe if we was just GP the grain and we stood on our own too, because once you do the woo, like I said at that time, like I explained to you, once once you come out with a single, now you GP woo. Now all the woo fanatics at the time they call up because this is where the pre-orders come. So anybody who's calling up woo, like yo, what's up with that GP woo? They down with y'all? 
So if a Devon or a Powell or a Rizzo or whomever was like, nah, we ain't jacking them, that ain't that ain't us, you know what I mean? That could help you at retail. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And due to yeah. the fact that they wasn't even saying, you know, the clan could be like, yo, we wasn't even opening up for them. Imagine we would have opened up for them when our album dropped. That would have helped our sales go up. But they just shunned us out and had nothing to do with us uh, whatsoever. Cool. Thanks for that. Another question uh, came in from Lex Pierre last time. He said, what make what made you decide to go with Black on Black Crime as the single? Um, and I think that the other part of it w- was that, that the, the content of that song was kind of opposite of what was out at the time. It was ironic. I mean, um, when I first came out with Black on Black Crime, because I'm trying to understand the question, why did I come out with it in general, or why was it on like the GP album? Yeah, I guess but, just in general, what, what made general, you pick, pick that? In general, yeah, I came out. In, in general, I came out with um um um. And I'll tell the story again. I came out with Black on Black Crime because at the time, um, I, I was coming out independently, and I had just finished. Mm-hmm. Maybe I had I had I, I, I just finished working with another uh, individual when I dropped. Can you woo 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 and let's go to lap. So even though I had multiple, multiple songs with r and uh, this was my first journey dealing with Smoke, uh, Smoke Records. And so that's that's why I really put the Black on Black Crime out on. It was Black on Black Crime was the A side and then um, a GP Connection was the B side. So I chose to do Black on Black Crime because I had another song I wanted to go with, but I didn't know the Smoke like that. So all... Uh, came up with a beat and I more or less came out with Black on Black. I took the beat and I think I wrote Black on Black Crime overnight. And then I mm-hmm. came back into the studio because Black on Crime, Black on Crime, there's only two verses. Mm-hmm. So right. I kind of was just like, and it's, the beat was so you know, stretched out and, and, you know, I said, I can't, it'll be too long if I had three verses to it. Right. So I just made sure I, I wrote two tight verses and um, I didn't want it to be local. You know what I mean? I told myself when at that time, I remember my mind state was like, you know what? Let me make more of a universal song. And um, Black on Black Crime, I knew, was going on across the whole United States. Not really even thinking about blood diamonds in Africa and, you know, everything that's going on abroad and other places. But I knew that um, coming from out of the crack era and the terror era that, you know, we were we were killing each other off. So I didn't really I, like and like the like the you know like the individual said at that time you know Biggie and all of them was really coming with the street and glorifying the crack. And I just said, you know what? What better way to stand out than to than, than to fit in? And then you got to remember who I am, man. I'm Pop the Brown Hornet, man. So the Brown Hornet always comes. He's an MC that comes with messages. He's conscious. He's more. I do have, you know, other aliases, other sides of me that'll, you know, do X, Y, Z, but the Brown Hornet just wanted to become more conscious at that time. Right. Cool. Thanks for that. And the last question we had uh, from the audience is, how did you get connected to Hank Shockley and, and Daddy-O? Yeah. Um, I know they, I know they was big. I knew Hank was big on Black on Black Crime. Mm-hmm. And once he, you know, once he got to connect and somebody, you know, they got connected to us on Staten Island, he, he pulled it in because, I, like I said, I dropped Black on Black Crime as a single on Smoke Records. Then when we got to MCA and Hank was big on it and Daddy Yo was also our a and r too from um, Stetsasonic. So it was Hank and, Ste- uh, uh, Hank and, and Daddy Yo. They grabbed Black on Black Crime and they repackaged it and put it out of there again. And they made sure it was on a GP, al- GP album. And I'm not sure if Hank might have thought it was like maybe the second of Chuck D coming with the black on black, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. And the heavy voice and things of that nature. But I know he gravitated towards us in that fashion. Um, so I think it was a manager at the time, Silky Dawn, and he was um, managing an artist named Sharice Arrington that was on MCA. And he got a hold of our demo and he brought it up to Hank and, you know, like I said, the black on black crime and, oh, they're coming with a group. So that's more or less how that springboarded. it. Cool. Cool. Got that's, you. Be- yeah, go ahead. Sorry. That's, uh, or, that's one I thing must- I, I could say about Daddy-O, man. One thing, Daddy-O always had his ear to the street because I remember mm-hmm. when he was in Chicago, man, like he was looking out for a lot of artists and I was like one of them because he did a, 
unsigned hype in Chicago. And that's one thing I always respect about Daddy O, man. He had his ear. He always got his ear to the street, mm. not only in New York, but even in Chicago and Atlanta. Like, he was just like, he just knew what was what. You know what I'm saying? So big up to Daddy O for that. for Because he, he seemed to be like, one of the one of the real ones which within the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So real like, pioneer. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Man. Respect to daddy old man for real. Be- before we jump into uh this this form and Mandela album and dissect it a little bit, uh Neville, Iomas, Profound, anything else you want to touch on before we we move up to recent years? Yeah, I just got the- a lot of respect for Pop, man. He yeah. think the way I think, bro. Like, yeah. so I just, I'm really loving this conversation. Appreciate so the thank love. you, man. Yeah, Definitely man. appreciate the real, love, yeah. All right. Respect, man. Foreman Mandela came out 2019, I believe. Um, mostly produced uh, by... Phantom of the Beat. Phantom of the Beat, right there. A couple of, track, uh, couple of tracks done by um, Dom Stacks. Yes, yes. Up and coming artist. First joint, I'm curious to know... Uh, who straighten it out? Whose idea was it to rhyme over that that classic sample uh, that Pete Rock you know grabbed for Pete Rock and CL Smooth? Was that your idea or was that Phantom's idea? Uh, I, I believe it was RNS's idea. RNS, okay. I think RNS and Phantom was probably having a conversation, and I know that that sample had came up, but the conversation was whizzed by me. I probably wasn't even supposed to know. So then when I tried to act like it was my idea, like, yo, let's do that on the street. Let's figure that shit be. Like, oh, shit, yo, me and I was talking about that. So, you know what I mean? So I, I, it was probably Armin Ness's idea. But, um, <clears throat> you know, once once I heard it, and he, I was like, oh, yeah, nah, I, I can work with that. We could definitely mm. amp it and make it, you know, with things that's going on in, in today's time, I can yeah. definitely, you know, mesh it out. That sample always, I feel like it is always relevant. Straighten it out. Like it's always relevant, you know? So that, that was a dope way to set off the album. Uh, the, this, yeah, man. The, the second joint is the title track. And I, I want to throw it to Ayo Mas here. This is Foreman Mandela. This is what you quoted earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so I'm going to throw it to you. Foreman Mandela. Foreman yeah. Mandela. Not to cut you off, but straight no, you it good. out. Foreman yeah. Mandela, I'm kind of like, kind of pushing right now. Um, in this present time, yeah, we've got videos on YouTube and all of that, but yeah, former Mandela. Yeah. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Iomas. No, but I wanted to go back to straighten it out. Like, oh, those, yeah, good, those, those rhymes, man, like from you and Don Dollar, that's that it. blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> now, like, Don Dollar is, is featuring Don Dollar. That's my physical son, my actual, actual oh, son. Oh, wow. Hey. My oh. son's son, like, you know what I mean? Not my son from around the way, my wow. actual. <laughs> yeah. So you can see the video you and the well, video bro. on YouTube. Yeah. On YouTube, you watch the video, you'll see the resemblance, like, wow. you know, good enough. You know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. So, and you know, <clears throat> individuals, once again, Brown Hornet, one of the first to do so because there's a lot of, there's a big group out here that has a lot of sons out here, and I never heard them do any song with their sons. But wow. once again, <laughs> Brown Pony keeps it real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I wanted to make sure that, um, and my son Don Dollars, he's working on his own solo projects and things of that nature. But I definitely wanted to make sure that you know we did something from the day he knows how to make a hip hop song. This is what a hip hop song yeah, is so, yeah. Like that's dope that that's your son, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> Well, you put, well, the, you put the life. I didn't take the DNA hand, test, bro. but he, but he got my nose. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Like my favorite line from there is when you said, uh, "Monkey see, monkey do." A bunch of copycats. Hip hop has been plagued with a bunch yeah, of mumble yeah. rap. <laughs> yeah, womp womp yeah. womp coming through my speakers. Speaker. Is it me or do they all sound also like Charlie Brown's teacher? <laughs> 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 I like Joe. That line is off the hinges, bro. That, 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 y'all blacked out on you and your son went in, and then your son was just like, "Y'all, what did he say? Y'all, y'all ain't real right. Y'all, y'all young. You a young blood. You, you n words grew up on Uzi Vert and Young Thug." <laughs> Help me straighten it. The market hip hop. Take a look at what they make of it. Hmm. Game ain't dead, but it's definitely in, cri- in critical and <laughs> in, in, in critical. Check up like a physical. 16s of scripture. All my words are biblical. I'm like, yeah. dude, 
y'all blacked out on that joint, bro. Nah, like, nah, respect nah, for that. Nah, that's nah, a nah. like until to till. That's the way you kick off an album. That yeah. album, the, that song right there was perfect. So yeah. thank I appreciate, you. Man. I, I appreciate the love. Nah, yeah. definitely. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, my son. I remember back when I was dropping Black on Black Crime, and he was a shorty. He mm-hmm. might have been like three years old, four years old, and he knew all the words. So I always tell him like, "Nah, you you definitely a hip hop baby. You grew yeah. up in this. You know what I mean?" Yeah. So. It's definitely an honor to be able to, you know, I did a lot of songs with a lot of individuals, but to be able to do a song with your offspring yeah. and be on time, like, you know, and, yeah. and you know, it's, it's definitely a blessing from the higher power. That's why I say these, these, these things come from the higher power, right. man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no doubt. Amen to that. Wow. So the second joint is the title track, and that's the one you're pushing now. Video is out, Foreman Mandela. Yeah. Um, the, uh, yeah, I almost you quoted the, the longer part of it, but I that part where you said the longer the journey, the bigger the reward that stuck out to me for sure. Because yes. uh, yeah. last time you were on here, you kind of broke down, you know, why you named it Foreman Mandela, which I think is just so dope. So if you don't mind for people that didn't check that yeah, first episode. Yeah, yeah. Can you break that down again? Because it's so dope. Yeah. Right. Foreman Mandela. Um, so I grabbed George Foreman and Nelson Mandela and I just grabbed their last name and messed it together. So Foreman Mandela, George Foreman was a was of course the heavyweight, lost his belt to Muhammad Ali. Um, in a nutshell, it took him 17 years to get the belt back. Um, he retired for 10 years, and when he came back, it took him seven years to get it. So he wasn't deterred, even though he was defeated, he still came back, kept his eyes on the prize, and still became the heavy, the oldest heavyweight champion of the world. Mm. Um, Nelson Mandela locked up for over 26 years, um, still came out, became president in certain parts of Africa, Nobel Peace Prize, you know, the, one of the humblest men that we all know. He didn't mm-hmm. break him, he didn't, you know, so he didn't lose focus. He still wanted to be a voice for his people, you know what I mean? Um, locked down, for, like I said, for over 26 years. So mm-hmm. Brown Hornet, I kind of embodied that. And when I had dropped my solo album, it was right around 2000 and so it was a good 19 years since i dropped the solo album so i didn't let time defeat me yeah. you know nobody comes back in the, in the you know when when he shit the fuck is coming back he even wants to be heard because he even still got it you know what i mean so to be able to make an album after that long hiatus and to have some kind of relevancy and stay in power is for me to still be promoting, and I know it's like, like you know, I just know it's, it's heaven sent because um, I just felt like I froze myself and defrosted myself and just mm. put myself back into the studio and said, I'm not going to pay attention to what all the madness that's going on now. Yeah. I'm just going to give these people traditional classical hip hop that I know yeah. what I know how to do. Yeah. That's dope. Not defeated by time. I know you said that last time. I love yeah, that. I love, I love that. that idea. Yeah. So dope. Not so, defeated uh, by time. On the following track, Hustle Hard, and we, we're not going to go through every track, but oh, did you want to no, say you something? Could go through, you could go through every track, but Hustle Hard, I, I, yeah. Hustle Hard, um, that's that's Dom Stacks. That's the young individual from Staten oh, okay. Island, and I just yeah. wanted to get like some beats that was more like what they're doing now, and he kind of like had the hook. He's actually a, an Italian white boy, so he was like, and, then, and I was working with his father. I worked 731. So his father works for National Grid, and his father was like, mm. "My son played these does beats." So it took me oh, four wow. years. It took me about four years to listen to his son's beats. <laughs> when I did, I was like, "Oh shit! Yeah. You know what? He's he, he, I, I, he's gonna make my album." You know what right. I mean? So that's how that happened with the hustle hard. So I told him, "You know what? That's this hustle hard." I mean, that's what we got to do anyway to get on. You know? Right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I like that. I really like that song. And the 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 one line that stuck out to me, you said, went from section eight to my own estate then i lost everything but never lost the faith Ooh. and um that whole second verse is just very inspiring Ooh, to me fire. Ooh. i mean sometimes like it's like when you're watching a rocky movie or something mm. like that like you know what i mean sometimes yeah. when you're just watching the simplicity when you watch rocky one and how they lived in that apartment and how they before the come up the struggle yeah. you know what I mean? before the pearly you know what I mean? before you got to the gates to open up the mansion and all of that Sometimes you want to just embody that story, how it was. Right. You didn't have a winter coat. You didn't have no weed to smoke. You know what I mean? Right. You know, 
that's that hustle hard mentality, keep it in you. Because even when times are bad, that's when the, the going's supposed to get, you know, tough. When the tough gets going, you're supposed to, you know, knuckle up, buckle up. Yeah, yeah. The, you know? Another line that stuck out to me um, from the album that you gave us a few times tonight. It's just a fly, it's a fly song. It's Stapleton Fly. Fly song talking about just being fly. And you said you got the million dollar smile, not a penny less. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's, I love, the, I love like little said, short lines. Said, like Powerball pockets. You know what I mean? Your girl stands so hard, my bus of eye sockets. Yeah, pull yeah, yeah. For something topless. They stand to them out of sight, brag about my pe- presence. You all, you know what I mean? Yo. But yeah. Stapleton Fly is the embodiment of, Look, look at Ghostface. Look, I mean, the shiny. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, that's before us. Like, that's right. the Paris crew, the BBDs and the Kangos right. and, you know what I mean, with the jeans, the jeans suits. I mean, you know, and every, I mean, come on, the, the, the laces. Brothers would dress up like Run DMC. You have the leather blazers with the hats. And the, you know what I mean, it was a Stapleton was an embodiment of, of, of being, like I said, I was, I, I was the only kid I grew up, you know, from, from my mom's, mm-hmm. you know, and I, I know who my pops is, but being up in the hood and when you see the different, that's where you learn your style from looking out the back window right. or you walking down the block, the street, you see British walkers or you see, you know what I mean, the latest, whatever, back then, remember the Sergio Valentes, the Joe the, the, yeah. the, the, the Gucci, the, it was the Benetton sweaters, I mean, this was all in Stapleton. Right. You know, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. some of this shit I couldn't afford. I couldn't afford a four-finger ring. I mean, I did have the the Sherilyn and all of that. I was happy with what I, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But um, it's just the flyness, you know. Yeah. When you're from the hood, you know what it is. You, 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 as long as you was looking fly, I mean, you, you felt good about yourself. Right. So that's what it is. We Stapleton bums, but, you know, we Stapleton <laughs> fly once we, once we press that shirt up. You know what I mean? It's right. Just, it's just a, you know, it, to, in a nutshell, it's definitely a, a feeling, an emotion, and, and, uh, and, a, and a statement. When you say stable, it's a, it's a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, Ghostface made a bathrobe look fly, bro. <laughs> I seen this dude come to Chicago, man. This bar came on stage with a bathrobe on and that big, huge chain that looked like a plate. I was like, Joe, that's. That's flavor right there, bro. For real. So that's <laughs> definitely staple to it. Gotta be staple to fly. That, that gotta be. Because who can pull that off? But you know what I'm saying? Like that's and, dope. And, dope. and you got a couple of people duplicating that right now. You're gonna exactly. see a couple of couple of people coming from Staten Island. They got the robe on, whether it be the facade oh, okay, sheets or whatever, okay. whatever. So it's is 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 it's making this 360. But Stapleton fly, I mean, you know, they they there's a there's 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 a lot of other you know, projects that, that get busy and, and get dressed or you know, whatever the case may be. But like, like I said, me, me coming from Stapleton, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a big us up, you know, Stapleton yeah, fly yeah, all day. Yeah. 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 So in, in addition to that album, you also have a few singles floating around. Uh, one, I want to, I didn't ask you about this last time, but you have a single called No Smoke with King Just and uh, Fess Taylor. W- was that for, off of something or was that just like a one-off single? Yeah, that's just a one-off single. I mean, okay. I actually, the how I came out, I, I was, uh, there's a brother of mine, Lance, or uh, whatever the case may be, and so when I walk into his house, he doesn't make music, but he just, he's a freestyler, so every time mm. I come into his house, he just wants to start freestyling and yeah. shit. He'll pick up an instrument, <laughs> he's just start. I can come off from work, he's just like, yeah, you bum ass, dude, fuck that brown horn, and I'm going in, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. <laughs> so he wound up throwing on that thing, and I was just like, you don't want no smoke? And I was like, yeah. oh shit, instead of, I ain't no joke. I was nope. just like, yeah. you don't want no, I just let off with it. And I was like, yo, it's a fucking song, baby. Yeah. So I took it and the rest was history. I just grabbed yeah. KJ and just said, you know what? Let's just have fun. I mean, yeah. you know, we ain't the great Rock Kim, but you don't want no smoke since that's a catchphrase that's going around right, right. now. Let's just kind of just run with that and just have fun. Yeah, I really like that song for that reason too. It's a fun yeah, song. Yeah. Fun. Yeah, yeah. Song, you know what I mean? yeah. But the other single you have out, a little more serious, Daydreaming with the Force MDs, right. legendary uh, Stapleton uh, crew. Um, well, well, Staten Island. Staten Island crew. Staten Island yeah. crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, tell shout us about this and how that song comes Shout out to the together. Force MDs because the Force MDs are from New Brighton and Manus Harbor. So mm-hmm. yeah, definitely shout out where they're from. 
Yeah, can you tell us how that that single came together? Well, what's so, it was so ironic? Gonna... Yeah, go ahead. What's so ironic? The daydream, and I had I had visions of doing that with uh, my sister mm. um, a, a couple of years back, or whatever the case may be. So I had asked Phantom to 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 make the beat, and then when things didn't you know transpire with my sister, I kind of sat on it for 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 about two years, and then when I had did the interview with um the Force on their radio show. You know what I mean? He, uh, Kyle was just like, yo, we should do a joint. I was like, well, mm. I, got, I got a no brainer. You know what I mean? So yeah. it was like, we went back and forth a little bit. There was a, you know, a little bit of reluctant because daydreaming, uh, you know, it was originally done by Curtis Blow. And um, I, it was written by um, Orange Juice Jones. So, like I said, there was a little reluctant on it because it was like, yo, it's somebody else's joint. But I said, yo, listen, dealing with a whole nother generation two generations right. that song hasn't been done since the 80s right you know what yeah. i mean and i said now that we're dealing in a time where we're dealing with so where they're trying to force feed us in tutus and handbags it's okay for a masculine male you know to show some emotions to yeah. a female like you are daydreaming about and any man that say he wasn't daydreaming about a, a, a woman before must be gay and was daydreaming about a man right. <laughs> right yeah no doubt for now, sure. but we all you know we all, you know, we all daydreamed. I yeah. mean, look like insomnia. Well, he's daydreaming now about it. You know what I mean? Profound. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. You know I mean? No doubt. Now, all, so I figured, you know, let me do the rendition. Let me do the remake. What better than um, on my comeback trail, you know, just to take you on a quick ride. You know, I, I did the Emperor and the King, the best of both foods with KJ, you know, in 2017. That's when I came back with the, the former Mandela. So I worked with King Just. When I came with the former Mandela, majority produced by the UMC's own Hodge G, a.k.a. Phantom of the Beat. So that's more spent now. So now that I come back with a late single right now, mm. the Force MDs, the legends themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, themselves. Right. About, who, who else needs to annoy me? Like I'm standing out in history right yeah, now. I got yeah. I got King Just UMC's Force MDs. You know what I mean? Right. Um only I, I got songs with Shaheen. You know, you know what I mean? So my resume is just missing Wu Tang, but besides that, I'm I'm well versed and well covered, man. Yeah, so no doubt. I'm just standing out in history. So to have the latest one daydreaming with the Force MDs definitely yeah. something to scratch off my bucket list. Yeah, for sure. Is there is there music you're working on now? I'm always working on music. Um, I definitely, probably, I'm going to drop another single mm -hmm. on, and, and probably top it off. Uh, I'll probably do one more video from off the farm in Mandela and okay. move on to another album. Come, you know, with so much going on with the world right now, I just want to embody a lot of this. I don't even, God knows where we're going to be in two more months with this True. mandated vaccine. I don't know if we're going to stand up and be unified and say, you know what? I mean, because my thing is this, this year they mandate a vaccine. What they're going to mandate next year? And are we just going to get in line and just do it? That's, that's because we are, that's slowly just taking away our freedoms. I mean, if you pay attention to what's going on in France right now, pay attention to what's going on in, in a certain where they're already enforcing was you know i mean it's real so we got to pay attention hip-hop might be, be be you know might have to play second fiddle i'm always going to make music but mm. what do the people really want i mean it seems like that mad max music is next you know what i mean because we're living in some really serious times man i mean if we could ignore it or we could pay attention. And me, I'm one of those. I'm, I'm very keen on current events. I like social studies. So yeah. it's really hard for me to ignore and not want to put my pen on it. So yeah, I, I'm yeah. going to have to be careful on how I do it. You know what well, I mean? Well, we'll definitely be looking forward to any music you put out for sure. Is there a yeah, producer sure. that if you, if you could get anybody, are there producers out there that you'd really love to work with? Necessarily. I mean, my thing is, is I, I like hot music. I, I have a certain ear for a certain, you know, yeah. I, I, I can bend and I can also, you know, but once I hear something that's stand out, I, 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 don't, I don't care who made it. I yeah. just, you know, I just want to get on it. All right. So, now, then, then I'm sending you, we're going to send you some beats then. 
it's all good. You know? it's I all knew that good. was coming. <laughs> good so pitch, good. too. You like that? Now, yeah. what sounds good to me might, you know, not sound good to you. Oh, yeah, no doubt. No, no doubt. But no doubt. No doubt. Listen, I'll, 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 I'm all, I'm all for it. I, so. I, I, I shift through beats because my thing is, <clears throat> real quick, you know, for I have different personalities. Like, so with the brown horn is over here. But 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 Benny Black, he's he's that he got you. Um, you mm -hmm. know, uh, Bomber Fire. He, so I got different where you could grab a beat and it might fit Benny. This one yeah. might fit the Brown Hornet. This might, you know what I mean? So oh, I yeah. get to be having different projects. I actually want to be able to do something like that in, in, in the near future. Yeah, dope. Because dope. I, uh, you know, dope. We'll we'll definitely send you something. Uh, before we, we go into the shout outs tonight, um, pop, is there anything else you wanted to address or, or talk about? I think we more or less covered everything. Yeah. You know, like I said, um, you know, all the listeners, the former Mandela go streaming the, the, yeah. the, 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 uh, daydreaming with the force MDs added to your playlist, go stream that. Um, yeah, but shout out to everybody out here in the hip hop world. Shout out to all my people's out here in Staten Island. You already know. Yeah. All, uh, all the projects, Stapleton, One Love, you know what it is. Pop the Brown Hornet. Boom, boom, fire! <laughs> do, you have, do you have time for one more or a few more questions from our uh, man yeah, Neville in the background? Okay, cool. Neville, yeah, go ahead. Jump in, man. Yeah, last questions. I've been thinking yep. about this um, from the beginning. Since you came up and watched them, you know, from the back, from the, um, from the gate and off the jump, right? Who would you say, number one, is your, I hate asking them to this, but I'm going to ask who would you say is your number one MC out of the Wu Tang Clan? Like your favorite, and then number two, who do you think is the most skilled MC mm. out of the Wu Tang Clan? Um, <clears throat> um, who who's my favorite? You say who's my favorite? Yeah, first one is who's the favorite, and who do you think is the best? Yeah, that's, that's, that's that's a hard question. That's a hard question, um, but I'm gonna I'm a lead. I'm gonna lead. I, I'm gonna have to say two people. I, I love Ghost. I love Ghost, and I love Meth. So they my they they one and two. Um, and you could go back and forth with them, but I, but I, you know I just I, I fucks with both of them. Um, and the most skilled. Ooh, that's either that's either the Jizz or Inspector. Mm. That's either you know either one of them. They, they, to me, they look like brothers. If you was to be in dark in a hoodie, and you, 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 you might, you yeah. know what I mean? And they, <laughs> right. they, they brothers from different mothers, but right. those two are the most skilled out of them. Those two are my favorite. Dope, dope. Uh, Iomas, Profound, any, any last questions for you guys before we enter our round of shout outs? Nah, that was, uh, yo, go ahead, go ahead, Pro. I no, I was just saying, man, Pop didn't drop a lot of jewels today. That's yeah. what I'm doing, Pop. I, I wasn't daydreaming. I got a notepad, bro. I was writing <laughs> stuff down, man. I got you got some. Yeah, because he's gonna be like just in case when you bump into any Wu Tang boom 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 brown the the pot the brown hornet shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, if C's don't, I wouldn't even do you like that. Nah, but you listen, and that's word the woo, man. I mean, you can yeah. do. And I, before I go, I'm gonna tell you what Wu Tang means to me because Stapleton and Park Hill were rivals in 10304. You know what I mean? So we put the rivalries down and we joined together. Mm. So we united to achieve new goals. That's yeah. what Wu Tang stands. For Brown Hornet, we united to achieve new goals. Mm. That's Wu Tang to the Brown Hornet. The 1034 merged together. Stable Park, Stapleton, and Park Hill, we merged together to so unite the Wu Tang. That's dope. That's super dope. Well, the way we do it uh, on most Thursday nights, Pop the Brown Hornet, we go around and give shout outs, and then we'll give you the last shout outs, and then we'll be on out of here. Is that good? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. Well, let me throw it over to Profound. Profound, who you shouting out tonight, man? Usual, man. My babies, my seeds, Amir, Zakir, Rosalina, Daima, Ariel, Elijah. Just got home from football practice. Mm. Be on location soon. You know how we do. Pop the Brown Hornet, of course, man, for coming through. Thank you for coming through again. And my Boom Bad Chat brothers, Big Neville, Big Io, Big Till. And you know how we do, man. And man, let's you know, shout out Chicago, man. Of course, yeah, man. man. The home, the home team. Got to shout out the home team. And my people's in New York too. No doubt. Uh, I owe my. So you shouting out tonight? 
Man, shout out to my 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 queen, my beautiful wife, my family at the crib in Chicago, my family in Detroit. Um, just want to shout out uh, the sis Nicole Hannah Jones. I don't know if y'all know her situation where mm. she's a Pulitzer surprise, uh, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist who was trying to get on tenure as a professor at yeah. UNC and they denied her. So now she's at Howard University. So. Shout out to her for you know the adversity that she went through and she finally mm-hmm. landed at Howard University. So you know how they do black people. We always gotta like have uh uh credits on top of credits mm-hmm. or like you know degrees on top of degrees in order to get through the door instead of just giving us our props off of the work that we do. So shout out to her. Um and then she, uh, of course shout out to 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 Pop Brown Hornet man for stopping by tonight dropping gems and the knowledge that you that you impart. Thank you for this project. It definitely inspired me. Um, I just thank you for the dope conversation. Like, man, I hope you I hope you come back. I hope you be like a, a staple. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just keep coming back. No pun on Stapleton Projects. <laughs> shout out to my people in Stapleton Projects too. And wow. Staten Island, man, for sure. Enough respect. Yeah. Salute, right man. Wow. Salute to wow. you. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Io Neville, who you shouting out tonight, man? My, um, my shout outs is, I guess, Shaolin, right? Shout out to Staten Island, man, the forgotten borough and the unsung borough at times. And LI, too, Strong Island, too, because sometimes Long Island gets overshadowed. So Staten Island, Long Island, 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 Island. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? What else do I want to shout out? I want to shout out to you, MC Till, putting together the magazine. Dope. Yes. Iomas, profound contributions. Dope. Um, what else? And just shout out to everybody that like supports us, man, and follows yeah. us. Like I said last week, man, just that's priceless, you know. Yeah. <laughs> whether it's whether it's the verses or whatever, whoever stays with us in the rooms past the time and just you know, really with us, man. I I, I respect that love. And um, shout out to you, Pop the Brown Hornet. It's my yes. second time, you know, interviewing you, and it's it's been amazing. I've learned a lot, so I didn't really have a lot to say tonight. I just listened and learned a lot and soaked it up. And I downloaded the albums and Shaheen too. So I'm definitely going to be in the rotation. Appreciate, Appreciate you. Appreciate the love. Appreciate the yeah. love. Definitely. Yeah. Well, Thanks, Neville. And I'll jump off where you uh, pick up where you left it uh, to the fans, to the people on Facebook following in. My man Joe, Lex, really appreciate everyone. Tania, all y'all uh, that you know tune in every Thursday, either on Facebook or on the podcast later on. Appreciate everyone out there tuning into what we're doing. To MJ uh, for setting up tonight. Appreciate you for all you do. Uh, yes. Boom Bat Brothers, of course. Appreciate y'all. Always look forward to Thursday nights. Uh, my sister, my sister is not a hip hop fan. But she tunes into these boom bap chats, uh, you know, she loves her little brother. So I appreciate that. (laughs) Uh, So my sister, much love to you. Uh, Everyone um, that is going to be hit off with this magazine, we're doing a um, clubhouse launch party this Tuesday and going to talk about the the magazine, send out the link so y'all can check it out. So really excited about that. Next Thursday. Huge shout out to Suzanne and Brother Jay of X Clan. We got Brother Jay on here next Thursday. Super excited to have yes. him pick his brain. Jeez. Brother yes. Jay, Brother Jay, Jay what's what just you say? say? What you say? <laughs> Super excited about that. Yeah. And 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 finally, uh, before I pass it on uh, to Pop the Brown Hornet, to you, man. Thank you for being here, for coming back, being a man of your word, and uh, taking time to just share your story again. The music you share. Like I said, we're really going to be looking forward to anything you drop. So thanks for being here. Thanks for being who you are. And uh, I'll hand it over to you for the last shout outs. Yeah, yo, definitely shout out to you for having me. Boom, bap. Um, shout out to the listeners. Shout out to my little loud son in the back, Noah. <laughs> shout out to Don Dollars. Um, shout out to Stapleton, Paul Kill, Brian West, Brian Manis Harbor. Shout out to all the, uh, I forgot, you know, even Tonyville, the very home, the Owens and all of that. Um, shout out to all the MCs out there on Staten Island that's pushing, mm. keep doing you. See me, I'm still doing it. I'm having fun. So just have fun with it, man, and, and, and live your best life. Rock out. Bumble fire! Right on. On that Bumble note. Bumble fire. He gonna have me saying that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on <up> my fire. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and on that note, we say peace, 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 peace. peace, peace, peace.